Let me tell you something, Breaking Brown uh, and your black world family. In the last few days, as black churches have been burning to the ground across the country, from Ohio to Georgia to North Carolina to South Carolina, I am the one, and people like me um, are the ones who are being labeled as as anti-Christian. Okay, so so the anti-Christians aren't the ones who are who are burning down black churches, you know, without punishment. It's people like me. And let me let me explain to you and just take a few minutes to explain to you why my position isn't even an anti-Christian position. What I am saying to people who are saying every time they a Dylan Roof comes through, every time Dylan Roof comes through or 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 or, or racist before that racist can even before that racist can even show up in the courtroom, what you have are black people saying, no matter what you did, no matter how heinous, I forgive you immediately. Okay. So what I am saying is that this interpretation, this, this, this sort of pacifist, um, domesticated, uh, uh, interpretation of Christianity that I see espoused by so many African American Christians is an impediment to freedom in this country. Now, I'm that's, that's not saying that all Christianity is awful or all Christianity is bad. What that says is the way that you people are interpreting Christianity is detrimental to the future of black people in this country. That's what we're basically saying. That's what I'm basically saying. The way that you are interpreting this, because I've had Christians tell me, listen, I've had Christians tell me that redemption, I'm not a Christian, but I've had Christians tell me that redemption is a part of Christianity. So if redemption is a part of this, shouldn't that person want redemption? Shouldn't that person at least have to ask for your forgiveness before you fall on your knees and, and talk about glory and talk about how everything is going to be okay. And you know, uh, he'll have to answer in, 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 in heaven. I mean, in hell or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever mythological kind of afterlife you kind of created without knowing. But if that, if that's the case, if that's how you feel, Shouldn't you tie that to something? Because the problem is that when you look at it this way, when you look at it as, as, as there's no requirement for your forgiveness, what happens is that people have, there's, there's nothing stopping people from saying that, hey, I'm going to do whatever I want to do to you because you're not going to do anything about it. You don't have the wherewithal. You don't have the mental capability. You don't have the structural, the mental structural, the structural capability. You don't have the intellectual fortitude to do anything about it. So why should anyone care? Is it, is it, is it any surprise to anyone that, that whoever is burning these churches nationwide, that these people are not targeting African American mosques. You know that we know the government targets African American mosques, but one thing that you need to think about is that it these are Christian churches that are being targeted. You know, and and over a dozen of these Christian churches have been targeted over over when you look over the past 25 years alone. So you have to ask yourself at some point as a foe as a, as a person who is engaged in a war, and that's what that's what African Americans have been sort of engaged in in this country for a long time. I mean, we've been fighting a battle for a long time. You know, we just haven't been the victor. So you have to, at some point, look at the strategy, just the strategy that you're losing, and the strategy that we we are using is this sort of you know this sort of Christianity. I mean, it was Stokely Mar Stokely Carmichael who said, "Listen, we we you know we weren't marching in the '60s, or we shouldn't have been marching to sit to, to, to just to sit next to white people in diners." You, that's not what this is about and that sort of that that sort of mentality has us at a place now where you look the, the voting rights act has been gutted you know we we have a bunch of black people in high places but nothing's being done about it you just saw obama you know go to a church and sing amazing grace a song that was written by a, a slave mat a, a former you know a, a slave guy and you wonder how much of black Christianity today is tied up not is tied up in the spectacle. You wonder if if the problem with black people is that we just like a spectacle. We like to go jump around, holler, put to put on a good show and then walk away because we Obama put on a good show. 
when he when he spoke when he spoke at the at the funeral at the when he when he gave the eulogy on uh friday i think it was he gave a good show he sang the song black people hooped and hollered but nobody thought about the fact that this guy is actually the same man who who, who increased the budget for prisons you know in terms of mass incarceration of of of, of, of black men nobody thought about the fact that this guy is the same guy who allowed wall street which you know, to, to walk away free. And you forget that Wall Street put together several schemes that rob black people of, 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 of decades and decades of generational wealth. That was wiped out because of Wall Street. And this stuff wasn't legal. When, when Obama said that was legal, he lied. It was not legal. These were schemes. These were scams. But he let it go. And when you look at everything Obama has been responsible for, even in the way that he shakes his finger and wags his finger, you want to wag your finger at black people, but you can't do anything. You know, when, 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 when all of these white supremacist organizations are, 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 you know, there's, there have been on the rise since you were elected president and now they're burning down black churches. You can't do anything about that, but you can tell you and Michelle Obama can tell me and every other black person that, Hey, everybody's not going to be a, a ball player. And you know, I be a good daddy to your child. You want to preach to me, but what do you have to say for these white supremacists who are burning down black churches? What do you have to say for this terrorist who, who killed you know, uh, uh, nine people don't talk to me about forgiveness because the people who have been doing and perpetrating these acts on black people, they don't forgive. They don't forget. So I think when you look at what we've gone through, I think part of it has to be, we have to get rid of our almost a fetish that we have for forgiveness. And we have to, we have to let go of some of these some of these, the way we like pep rallies, you know, that thing Obama did in the church wasn't anything but a, but a, but a, you know, an, an outsized, uh, you know, tabernacle held pep rally. That's all it was. It was a pep rally. He was there to make black people feel good and, and perform for black people and mimic us because he, that's probably, somebody told me that Amazing Grace was probably the only, you know, black church song he knows. So he, he knows how to perform blackness. He just doesn't know how to put in place a, 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 a you know, policies or, or fight for policies or put in place executive actions that help black people. So, you know, I just wonder why we fawn over him. I wonder why we fawn over, you know, our attachment or our fetish with forgiveness. And we don't know how to strategize. We don't know how to look at this thing soberly and coldly and kind of decide, okay, how are we going to address it? What am I going to do, you know, in response to this, you know, taking down the flag is, is, is symbolism. Who is going out and, and taking out these, these white supremacist groups. Why isn't the Justice Department made them enemy number one? I mean, you ISIS could come through here right now, the terrorist group ISIS or Al-Qaeda, and they could, they could not march on the square in, 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 in the city. They could, not, they could not get a permit to hold a rally. But you're telling me that the KKK, which has killed more Americans than ISIS, is going gonna, is gonna to put together a rally in, in, in South Carolina and we're just going to sit back and take it? And the first black president's gonna, president is going to sit back and take it? Is that who we are as black people? That's what. That's the question I need everybody to answer. Until you can answer that, don't tell me anything about forgiveness. Don't tell me anything about... Don't tell me anything about how Obama is your black president. I don't want to hear it. Tell me what we're going to do.